Good evening, members of Spiritually Encrypted Encounters. This is, this is, uh, I'm going to share a couple of uh, stories here for whoever's up, night owls like me, that I can sleep. The reason I can sleep at night time is because when I was in the military, I would do a lot of night missions, and I'll be up most of the nights. Most of the times I would get my rest would be during the day. So, you know, ever since I've come out from the military, I've you no, know, I would get me night jobs when I would work at night because during the day is when I get most of my sleep and sometimes not even that. You know, sometimes I don't even sleep, you know, but that's part of being a veteran, you know, especially when you're in the military, you know, and you, and you experience combat, you know. I know a lot of people don't want to hear about combat or combat stories, you know. They just want to know who won, who lost, but, you know, the memories of off combat always remain amongst those that served the front lines and there were natural combat. Uh, you know, so, you know, something to live by with every day, you know, but the memories, I have good memories, I have bad memories, uh, you know, I have a lot of good memories, you know, from, from out there, you know, the good memories is like when, uh, you're trying to hype somebody up or you're trying to joke around just to bring, bring a smile to somebody's face, knowing that you're going to go to combat and fight, you know, in the front lines, you know, um, they, that's what they, you know, they, they try to not let you think about what's going to happen. So they try to make you train and train and train and train, lots of training. Then by the time you know it, you know, if they, it's your call, you know, they call you and say, we're going to be on the front lines. What does it mean when it says you're going to be on the front lines? It means uh, that you're the first line of defense or offense, you know, depends whether you're doing defense or offense, you know, you're the front, the front line. What does it also mean that the front line, when you're in the front line, you know, there's going to be obstacles. In every war, there's obstacles you have to go through, whether it be landmines, minefields, uh, underground obstacles, artillery that hits you. You know, so if artillery gets shot at you, you know, it's, it comes at you from up on top. So if it hits you up on top of the tanks, you most likely, the tank will explode because is vulnerable from up on the top. So when they say you're in the front lines, you know, it's kind of like it sinks in then, you know, a little bit of, okay, we're in the front lines. And you could get in there, you know, because you've trained hard. You train, you know, train hard to, to the, the best of your ability, you know, train as a, as a platoon, train as a company. You train as a as a as a brigade or a battalion as a brigade. You do all these kind of different maneuvers. But when you go up against the enemy, you know, as you're in the midst of battle, bullets are flying around. You 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 firing main gun rounds. You see in the rounds of the enemy from the from their tanks. I'm just talking in, in my my view as a tanker, a former tanker of the United States Army. Um, in the, I'm talking when I was in the Battle of Medina Ridge. You know, when you're, you're fighting, you see in the rounds land, and you know, of course, you have a game plan. There's a there's always a game plan. You know, you have a game plan. You have a 
you know, alter, alternative game plan, uh, alternative things you can do, you know, but you train that way. You have a plan A, plan B, plan C, and etc. I live by that till this day. Uh, you could say where there's a will, there's a way. No, I didn't really want to talk about this tonight, but I'm going to, I'm going to talk about it so people can understand. When you prepare, you know, you prepare for different scenarios that might happen in combat. For example, you know, if, if the front line fails, then you have a plan B, which is the next wave of, of tanks that are behind you or whatever. But when you're in the front lines and you fire firing main gun rounds, you're seeing tanks explode at 3,000 meters. Or should I say, yeah, uh, 3,000. 3,000, uh, I think, meter or yards or whatever. It's like almost, so we're 3,000. That's a great distance. Um, and you shouldn't that far away. That's like a lot of football fields. And you see in the distance when you get a direct hit on the tank, you just see this. Looks like a little, looks like a, when it blows up, it looks like a, a lighter. But in the distance, where you got a direct hit, and you know you destroyed the enemy tank. You know we had two two main gun rounds, and those in the military, uh, which is the heat round and the saber saber round. The re heat round, what it does, it uh, penetrates the tank. And it does a meltdown within the tank. In which anything within the tank burns out. What's whatever inside the tank, it just does a meltdown. So, if whatever's in the tank, it, you know, they burn. You know, uh, that's the heat round. And then you get the saber round. The saber round, it enters the tank, it comes out of the tank. But it's going with so much velocity that it sucks out anything within the tank through a little hole. It just sucks everything out. Let me say it one more time. The heat round, it will hit a target, hit a tank, and it does a meltdown within the tank. Of the where, When it hits, it does a meltdown and everything inside melts. You know, so whoever's inside burns. You know, when we talk about biblical terms about the lake of fire, well, that's what that, that round, the heat round does. It's pretty heavy, probably like 70, 70, 75 pounds. Then you got the Sabot, where she moves pretty fast with so much velocity that it enters and, and it comes out of the tank. But when it comes out, it sucks everything out. That's how that one works. So those those tanks they you know they're they're destroyed. Uh, then of course we got our small arms that's on the tanks. We got the fifty cal, fifty cal machine gun that uh, the tank commander operates. You know if he sees troops or light light armored vehicles, you know that the fifty cal can penetrate those. Vehicles or anybody that's got, uh, for example, a bazooka, a bazooka or a grenade launcher pointing at us, you know, you can take them out with that. Then, of course, you got the 240 machine gun that's the gunner operates to shoot troops, you know, that are coming up against us. And then the loader has a 240 machine gun also. And then we have a F-16, you know, rifle in the tank. Plus our personal weapons. But when you're out there fighting the front lines and you're in the midst of the battle, you know, some people want to know how does it feel when you're in the midst of the battle? I've, I've had people ask me questions like, for example, were you afraid? Were you afraid when you were out there? 
The only thing I can tell you is, when you're out there, yes, fear, fear is there, but it's more like, it's like an adrenaline rush. You know, you don't know when that adrenaline rush is going to finish because you don't know what's going to happen. So, if that's why we train constantly so we can become first in nature, you know, so we, we perform our duties of what we taught. So that what what made us uh, be so uh, how should I say victorious when I was out there in the battle of Medina Ridge. You now you're seeing all this tanks burning, the enemy perishing, whether they're coming out of the ground, you know. Uh, trying to jump on the tank you got to do what you got to do or they're coming out of uh, underground bunkers with with their weapons and, and grenade launchers and you just take the tank and run run them up run over that foxhole because you had to do that right now i'm just sharing with y'all you know how, how it is to live with that for the rest of your life because of what you had to do out there in combat this is not for anybody to take anything out of context you know, this is me sharing my experience of when I was out there. You know, of course, like anything, you know, when you see you're you're a fan of a football game, right? You want your team to win. Well, in that in that sense of a way, when you're out there, you know, you're fighting. This is not a game. This is <laughs> the real deal. It's either you're gonna you're gonna win. Oh no! So let me let me rephrase that. Either you're gonna survive or you're gonna die. You know that's basically what it boils down to when you're fighting the front lines, especially being a tanker or a infantryman, a scout. You know they send us to the front lines. We're the ones that, that fight the 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 front. Uh, everybody else that support is towards the rear, you know, medics, mechanics, the cooks, all these individuals, they're to the rear of the rear of the rear. We was in the front. So, you know, when, you, when you're in the midst of the battle and you just, all these people are, are dying around you, you know. This one, not one I didn't share because it was kind of gruesome, but our tanks had, uh, I'm going to share it with you all. After, if you all remember when I spoke about when I had to, sh uh, had to shoot the, the guy that jumped on the front slope with the AK, they had an AK-47 that was fixing to shoot my crew that was on top, which was the loader and the TC, you know, and if you probably had a grenade with them too, all you had to do is throw it in the tank. So... If we would have got them and thrown the grenade inside the loader sash or TC sash, then it would have killed my my gunner and probably me. I would have gotten trapped or something out of it. So I had to eliminate that threat, you know, and, and if we all know, you know, I'm going to say it again. The reason I'm going to say this is because this is a true story. You know, it's not, it wasn't, it's not meant to, to, to scare anybody, but this is what I have to live with. And people have to understand that combat veterans, they carry a lot on their shoulders for the rest of their lives because of what they experience. So that, that person that had the AK-47, I had to open up my driver's hatch because I was a driver of the, of the M1 Abrams tank back then, back then in Operation Desert Storm. I had my prisoner 9 mil on my holster. I opened up the hatch. And I did what I had to do, you know, what I was trained to do, and that's eliminate the enemy. You know, if I wouldn't have eliminated him, he would have eliminated uh, uh, some of my, my, my crew that was up on top and possibly me. So we already know what happened to that individual, uh, which, you know, I used my nine and it was one shot, one kill. You know, bottom line, this I'm talking about combat. That's in combat. P 
people live, people die. Nobody should feel a, a squirmish or fear for the lies because I'm sharing a story you know, of combat. You know, there, if you look through the history books, there's mo there's movies that are movies that are made of snipers and all this stuff of what they do. Well, th you hear in the version of a tanker, you know. We're, the sniper is in a distance. We can shoot from a distance like a sniper, but we're fighting tanks, so it becomes a tank to tank battle. Uh, so as I kept on going forward after I shot the guy that was trying to shoot my crew, you know, eliminated him. You no, know, I kept on going forward, and uh, I could. We have it's called a CBC, which is a helmet. And it's got a, we got communications where we all can speak to each other. So as I'm listening to the, my crew, they're saying, hey, there's people coming out of the ground to the right. And there's, they're coming out of the ground to us. So I'm going to the right, to the left, and I'm running over these bunkers where there's full of people that are soldiers in there. And, you know, I could hear my loader say, oh, you done, you done messed them up. They're all, you just see body parts everywhere, you know. So I'm just listening to them, you know, what they're saying because I got the I'm I'm seeing what's in front of me through what through my vision, my through my uh sights. So I'm if they he's telling me, Yeah, hey, there's some people coming here from the left side, the left side of the tank, so I I'll go to the left and you know, take care of that enemy. There's some that are popping in front of me. You know, I'm slowing down uh for them, you know. I mean, as it is our tanks was only going like fifteen miles an hour. And the number of speed could be 25 to 30 miles an hour, like on pavement, but we're in the sand and the sand was getting into the filters of the tank. So it was slowing us down. So that's how that guy was able to jump on the tank. So as we kept on going forward, you know, uh, we were like, the, 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 the game plan was to try to be, <clears throat> it was, a. Uh, the range that we're supposed to be away from the enemy was 2,400 meters or uh, something in that nature in which we had a, a gap, uh, like a 600, seven, 700 gap range, you know. So we had destroyed, annihilated the Medina Republican Guard, you know. You could see him in the distance where the tanks are burning. But then they told us to keep on going forward. And that's how everything else happened. We got too close and there was people waiting for us in underground bunkers. So as it kept on popping up, they kept on getting run over by the tank, you know. Uh, after we passed that location where they had the underground obstacles, we were going forward and told us to stop. When they told us to stop, they told us to because our tanks had a, a smoke generators, you know, we we set up a smoke screen. So we turn on the smoke generator and we set up a smoke screen. All the tanks set up a smoke screen, so the enemy wouldn't be able to see us, right? Uh, and they told us to to when we did, uh, set up the the smoke screen. They told us to back up because we got support by Chinook. So we backed up. And use the smoke, uh, the smoke generator, the smoke is a smoke screen. And then, uh, as we backed up, the Chinook comes from the air. And there's some more tanks in, in the distance and just comes from the top and oh, he starts blowing them up. You now, the Chinook from a distance starts blowing up tanks, uh, obstacles, you know, just start, start doing some damage also, you know. So, we had air support, we had the Chinooks. And uh, we had some choppers that, uh, that were flying over us in the line formation. There was our support. So as uh, we were backing up from the smoke screen, I seen somebody coming out of the smoke. This guy was pretty tall. He had the... His face was full of fear. He was missing an arm. And he was losing blood fast. So, you know, he was, he was running with fear. So, so scared that he passed our tank. 
you know, I don't know whatever happened to this guy. I don't remember seeing this. This video is just what happens in war. You know, I'm, I'm just making this video. You know, uh, after we backed up and they told us to cease fire because we had destroyed the enemy. And uh, I, uh, I went up to I asked my first sergeant if he knew what happened to the, the guy that was missing an arm. He just told me, don't worry about it, <laughs> you know. So he was telling me, don't worry about it. Because, you know, when they, when the enemy is injured, you know, we're still supposed to, through Geneva Conventions, we're supposed to give them medical assistance. So I really do not know what happened to the soldier that was missing an arm. But I remember this. You know, there's something that is close range. That was like from here, like real close range. So, you know, I remember all this, you know, the only thing I could do after everything is, is pray, you know, pray for, for the fallen, you know, whether we lost some people or they lost some people, which it was them that lost a lot of people. I would pray for those that lost their life in combat, you know, I didn't go, uh, I should have said, you know, I was happy we survived, uh, but I didn't go make fun of the bodies or anything like that that were laying on the ground or that were visible. So I would normally just look up. I didn't want to look down because there was nothing but carnage in the front lines from combat. You know, uh, y'all seen I placed a picture of my tank. Now I might place it here, you know, I'm not sure. Uh, the name of our tank was called Death Angel. There was a name of our tank. People would say, well, why would you name your, your tank Death Angel? Well, you know, we're a Delta company. If, uh, if y'all have ever seen that picture of my tank, on the left side, it says 135 Armor. That's 135 Armor. That's, that's a patch for 135 Armor, old Ironside. Uh, uh, that's on the, on the tank, but on the gun tube, it also said death angel also the gun tube. So it's kind of like, I mean, we're, we're fighting in the front lines, you know, it's, we don't know we're going to live or die. So I guess it, they, they said, well, just name your tank, you know, you name your tank. I guess I know that that was like, they felt sorry that and, you know, they probably thought we were going to die. We we're going to be the first ones to die in combat. I don't know. Because sometimes the wars last a long time, right? So, you know, that's probably they told us to name the tanks, you know. Uh, so we named it Death Angel, you know. You know, when I, the reason I named it Death Angel is I started thinking about the angel of death. When, uh, when they ate the, the Last Supper and they had a mark, the, the, the doors... Or when they ate uh, the, they marked the doors with with blood. I think it was a time frame of when I can't remember uh, in the Bible where, well, basically when the death angel came and took the firstborns. That's why I named it Death Angel, because I was actually thinking of the angel of death. So I named it Death Angel because we're Delta Delta Company. So all all of our tanks had. It's something with a D. Uh, Alpha had something with an A. You know, there was a tank named Armageddon. Uh, there was the B had Babylon, you know. C, there was uh, different names, you know, that all the tanks had. And, of course, ours was D, you know. Yeah, the Passover. So, you know, we named our tanks, but... I still maintain my faith, you know, and I had prayed before. See, I didn't know that we were going to go combat the following day, you know, that we just had a prayer. Nobody told us, hey, you're going to, they just, it just happened that way. I guess they don't want people to, to get scared. So they're not going to tell you, they didn't, they didn't tell us at all that we were going to be in the front lines or that there was the, 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 we're going to go fight the enemy 
that day it just happened that way you know uh, it, it became first of nature so I guess they, they didn't even tell us exactly what was going to happen so when it started when everything started happening you know uh, we just had a fight and they, they shot at me first and now when we were in Tin City they shot us with a scud they shot a scud and it, it dropped chemicals on us and out there they blew an underground obstacle it looked like an under, underground obstacle that blew up, but then when when I went back and looked, I think the shadows was artillery, like a whole grid with artillery, and then it made the everything go up in the air. But it, if I think we were like maybe twenty feet away from that, if it would have been land on top of us, it would have destroyed all the tanks that were there in the front lines. But no, God was on our side because uh, we prayed. I prayed the day before. And I know that when you pray to the Heavenly Father, you know. Now I hear people talking and trying to use the Heavenly Father in vain. Uh, but in combat, in, in combat, you know, you all know throughout history there's spiritual warfare through combat. Uh, through different times and different eras, there has been spiritual wars. So I considered Operation Desert Storm to be, in a sensible way, a spiritual war uh, because of the beliefs of what we believed uh, to be God and Jesus Christ to what they believe as in Allah, which that's a, something that's not even God, that's more demonic. So I consider that to be a holy war. And all I knew that the so long we place Jesus Christ first, the Heavenly Father, that whoever places him first will win the war. And at that time, at that moment, it was just a, a battle and operations just a storm. You no, know, we I wasn't involved in two two battles, which was I guess the Medina Republican Guard and uh, Abu, uh, Abu, uh, Abu Saha, I can't remember the name, Abu Saha, which in, it was another army that we backed up some other people, uh, some other uh, uh, companies that they were fighting. So we fought in two different battles out there. Yeah, um, but that's sometimes that's why I can sleep sometimes, you know, because uh, uh, you know, as I'm trying to maintain my love foundation, the unseen forces that are around us, he tries to use everything that we've been through in life, everything that we've gone through in life to come up against us. So there's times that I have dreams of, of combat, you know, that uh, like if I'm actually still in combat. You know, people want to call them flashbacks, but that's why it's like when all this, all these people coming at me in a negative way, you know, it's like, I'm not afraid of them. You know, I was in the front lines of what I just spoke to y'all about. So I'm not afraid of anybody coming at me in a, in a negative way at all. I don't care who they think they are or who they think they're affiliated. I don't care about that. You know, it's kind of like, just let me be me, you know, uh, because I know one thing, uh, that Jesus Christ was, was with me then, and I know he's with me now. So I don't think they want to come up, me, up against me as an enemy, because the Heavenly Father, the one that protected me in combat, that gave me, that watched over me through a lot of things, a lot of trials and tribulations I went through, that I shouldn't be here right now still protects me now. So I don't think they want to come up against the Heavenly Father you know, uh, but being my enemy, you know. Because, you know, when you're trying to do something bad against somebody that has Jesus Christ in their lives and to place them first daily, you know, and you're coming up against them in a negative way, that's not good. You know, whatever attempts you try to do, it'll come back at you seven times fold. Prime example, the Battle of Medina Ridge, uh, what I'm speaking about, it went back to them seven times fold, you know. It's not like we shot at them first, 
they shot at us first. We just reacted to what they initiated. No difference. That's what's happening right now here in the crypt within the crypto community. Um, you know, I got targeted. Other people get targeted. I don't worry about them. You know, if I place you guys first and I don't live in fear, I don't fear none of those individuals. I don't care how many people they're affiliated with because Jesus Christ is with me. Uh, I'm talking about this because it's something that I experienced. You know, if people don't want to hear what I have to say about this, they don't have to. You can just go see something else. But I'm sharing my experiences of what I went through out there. Um, after the war, you know, after the, when we're still in the front lines, just to see my brother in arms and the people that are behind me, that they're they're happy that that we defeated the enemy and stuff like that. You know, it, it brings joy, joy to my heart, you know, because when you're in the military, those that are there with you, whether they're fighting with you as in the front lines to your left, to your right, or they're behind you supporting you, you know, you care about those individuals. You don't want nothing to happen to anybody. So after the, the Battle of Medina Ridge, you know, I was happy to see everybody happy that, you know, we overcame the enemy that fast. Look it up in the history books. It was a, the largest tank battle out there in the, in the battle. Battle of Medina Ridge was a, the, the biggest tank battle out there in Oper Operation Desert Storm. And it was the fastest war in history. Do you know why it was the fastest war in history? Uh, you already know the answer to that. Because Jesus Christ was on our side. Uh, look it up. It, it broke records of the most r rain ever in that area that year. Broke records. To say when... The heavens open and Mother Nature comes is because the Heavenly Father is sending his angels to assist. That's exactly what happened. So that's why I maintain my faith and my love foundation because I know Jesus Christ has been with me through numerous situations besides the battle on Midian Ridge. You know, he's been with me when I have had to fight spiritually also. He's with me all the time. Uh, I see one viewer here. I don't know if it's Brother Christopher or Sister Maria. Uh, but I just wanted to make this video, you know, that a lot of the veterans, you know, there's some that are hurting. Uh, there's some that have PTSD because what they, they've seen affected that affected the lives forever you know so some 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 of us uh soldiers you know that they have to take meds and stuff like that me i choose not to you know if a bad thought or anything comes my way i just work out don't think about it but i have the good memory that i can speak about it it's like uh I know that like the VA or, or, or places where they want to help you, they don't want you to talk about about anything related with combat or what you went through or been through. They just want to give you medications. And I, I, I believe when you speak about something and you, and you openly say what you've experienced, that it'll, it, it'll help you out more than keeping it within yourself and taking medicines because the problem is always still going to be within you. So when you speak freely about it, it it's not within you. You know, it's just like a, like a story. You know, like some people say they have an encounter with a with a dog, man, a bigfoot, a ghost, a demon, or whatever. You know, they're they're letting it out, and I believe that's the best kind of therapy, right? Anybody can have. And let it out. 
don't keep it within you let it out and I know that by you know I don't make this video to scare people <laughs> I make this video just to share uh, my, my wisdom and knowledge of what I experienced but so people can understand that life is not a joke especially when you you get placed in a situation a matter of life or death you know people some people are going to live and some people are going to die uh, as a soldier uh, serving my country that's what, that's what happens you know some people don't necessarily die in combat some people die during training accidents happen in the military many people many soldiers have died just during training you know so it's kind of like uh I've, we have to live with that with that for the rest of our lives you know uh the memories that's what i'm talking about memories another thing you know when people tell me hey don't be talking about this don't be talking about that you know what i'm gonna I'm going to talk about whatever I want to talk about, you know, it's just, it's just me, especially if I'm speaking of truth and it's coming from my heart, from my experiences, there's nothing wrong for me to say what I have to say. You know, like I said, if people don't like what I have to say, all they got to do is go look at something else. Uh, but I'm going to say what I'm going to say, you know, whatever stories I want to say, I'm going to say them because they're true stories. Just like I can tell when, when somebody speaking a story, and then uh, or they're saying their their story, or somebody's reading the story, you can tell when the story is real. And you can you can tell when the story is fake. You, know, you can you can literally tell because there's discrepancies within the story that that doesn't add up. You know, I pay attention to detail. That's why I say you know I created this group. To be able to vent, you know, whether it's a military story, whether it's uh, a spiritual story of what I've experienced, you know, you know, yeah, I was a soldier, but I still have a spirit, right? <laughs> Bottom line, just like anybody else, whatever your profession is, you have a spirit. Even the even the wicked people. Even the people that think they, they have some kind of power because they got promised something, they have a spirit. <laughs> they have a spirit also. It's just when they choose the wrong side, they just choose the wrong side. And, you know, the outcome of them choosing the wrong side, eventually it will catch up to them. Because the things that they worship, that they believe in, if they only knew that they only want to collect their soul, and they're not greater than them. That's why it's kind of, kind of dumb when they're believing in something and that because they're giving power to something. If they only knew that they're giving power to something that they're greater than the, than that, what they're giving power to. Because the reason I say this is because everybody has an opportunity to make it into the kingdom of heaven, which means that those that have fallen from the heavens Lucifer the Legion or anything affiliated with Lucifer they do not have the opportunity to make it to the kingdom of heaven so they're below us why would they be below us because we're children of God and we do have our birthright to make it back into the kingdom of given we're, we're born from the light and when somebody becomes sub submissive and thinks that these things that the worship is given a power, it's not given a power if they only knew that the greater power is through Jesus Christ because you're already above those individuals that you're worshiping and you're believing in them because they don't they can't make it into the kingdom of heaven. Their fate is already sealed. So you're basically giving worshiping and giving something power that really doesn't have no power, especially when it comes down to Jesus Christ. If you play Jesus, Jesus Christ first, He blesses us with the spiritual gift of discernment. So I think it's kind of 
kind of crazy. The these people that worship other other things that are man made, or should I say, the, their fate is already sealed. They don't. <laughs> the, their fate is already sealed. Do you think they want want to make want want you to make it into the kingdom of heaven? You know, they just want you to join them into the into the into the fire, into the burning lake, right? If you're worshiping them, that's that's what it wants. Uh, so all these people, you know, that I'm running into as of lately, if you want to call them fanatics, trolls, cults. Worshippers or whatever they worship. I'm just here to let whatever, however form or shape they come. I'm not afraid of y'all in any kind of way, shape, or form. Because Jesus Christ is with me. I'm just letting you know right now. Anything you attempt to try to do to me. Spiritually. Whether you, whatever you practice. Witchcraft. Norcromancy, voodoo, whatever you practice. All I can tell you is this. I don't accept no negativity. And it will go back to you seven times fold. So, if you don't believe me, and you make the mistake to do that, and it goes back time, back to you seven times fold, then that that's it. You know, it will go back to you seven times fold. I'm just letting you know right now. If there is an affiliation that's happening, then people are already affiliated. I'm not worried about y'all. Doesn't matter who you are. You're not going to stop me from doing my spiritual works. I'm letting you know right now. You're gonna. You're not going to stop me doing my spiritual works or spiritual encrypted encounters, or through through anything that I do. You're not gonna. You're not gonna stop me. I'm going to continue to do the works that I do because. That's my mission here on earth. I'm just following orders from a higher power. I'm just letting you know right now. So anything you try to do against me, you're just going to fail. I'm letting you know you're going to fail. You're going to fail and you're going to fail. I've run into people like y'all in the past. They failed. They failed miserably. But through the spiritual law, you know that's 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 not what happens, uh, I, and I know why you targeted me because of what I speak of the spiritual aspect of things. When I talk about, I was a Montana Love Foundation. When I talk about forgiveness, you despise that because that's not the works that you do. The works that y'all do, you want division, you want hatred, you want to deceive people, trick people. Uh, think that you're up here in a higher echelon when you're really not. And anybody that follows you, they're like your 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 puppets or your your uh, your your carpet that you step on. Well, I'm just here to say I'm not your carpet. I'm not a puppet. My name is Abe Seas. Whether you like me or not, I'm going to continue to do the works that I do. I don't care who you're affiliated with or anything like that because Jesus Christ is with me. I'm letting you know again. Reason I'm letting you know Jesus Christ is with me is because many have come in the past as wherever you want to see it, enemy of the flesh or enemy of spirit, and I'm still here. So I say, gather your little whoever's affiliated with you. You can gather that up and stick it where the sun don't shine. I'm just letting you know right now, stick it up where the sun don't shine, because. You ain't going to stop me doing my spiritual words. That's why I share my stories the way I, I, I share them because they're true stories. And I'm looking here right at the camera. There's no other interruptions. Straight at the camera. And I'm sharing my stories. And people know that what I'm saying is the truth. I'm not reading out of, out of uh, index cards or out of a computer. I'm saying I'm talking straight up of of my experiences of what I've been through, whether it be through the military or spiritual. Now I'm going to continue doing. I, I 
I've earned this. I've earned this through here, and I've earned I've earned it through the Heavenly Father, through Jesus Christ. Talking about loyal and loyalty, you know when you talk about loyal and loyalty, well, it's a little bit more stronger than that. It's about faith. If you, I don't think you know about faith. <laughs> it's about true faith. These people that, like I said, that are coming up against me in a negative way. If you already made your affiliations, fine. Do your little thing of what you're going to do. I'm still going to do what I'm going to do. You know, uh, I never, never had, I didn't have nobody to back me up in the past. And I, I, I don't need nobody to back me up now because my backup is Jesus Christ. And that's the only backup I need. So long I'm doing the good works, helping out people spiritually is all that matters to me right now. And if the Heavenly Father told me to, how should I say, awaken my brothers and sisters, what's the best way to awaken somebody spiritually that has no faith, that has is being bonded? How do you how do you awaken somebody in that nature? But you, you awaken them by, by showing them the light, showing them the truth, right? That's how they awaken. You, you awake, they awaken by letting go of the anger, the hatred, by forgiving. Once they do that, then the spiritual blessings come to them in which they awaken even more and they're guided by Jesus Christ because they're, they're placing them first. That's how they awaken. And you don't like that. <laughs> you don't like that, right? Honestly, you do not like that, that I bring that to the table and I'm telling them exactly what to do to free themselves from any kind of bondage you dislike that you dislike when i say god bless you you did you, you dislike when i say i love you you dislike when i say i rebuke you i tie by and rebuke you in the name of jesus christ or i tie by and rebuke you through jesus christ you hate that don't you but guess what he's my lord and savior I'm going to continue to do this works. It's a spiritual battle. I know where I stand in the balance. And I know where you stand in the balance. I'm going to con continue to do my spiritual works. And I I'm trained spiritually and physically. Either way, I'm going to do what I'm going to do. In spite of your little affiliations, you know, that people are trying to get into a higher echelon. It reminds me of the story of uh, when they built that, they tried to build that, the, the big, big tower to try to make it into the kingdom of heaven. <laughs> you remember that story in the Bible? The big tower that they tried to build to make it into the kingdom of heaven? Well, you ain't going to get into the kingdom of heaven that way. You know, the only way you can make it, make it into the kingdom of heaven is through Jesus Christ. That's the only way. I'm just a messenger, but I'm also a man of true faith and true belief in Jesus Christ. Uh, if, if you can try to taint me or paint me to be a bad person, but my videos speak for themselves. I speak for myself. I don't need a spokesman to speak for me. I can speak for myself very clearly. So the viewers who review my videos understands where I stand spiritually. Uh, But instead of, of dwelling in negativity, you know, it's like that right there by itself, man. I know how that feels. Having anger, hatred, vengeance in your heart, it makes your heart black. It makes you think that you don't have no love in your heart. It makes you think that you're a bad person. But truly, honestly, that's just the unseen forces that are trying to bond you to make you think that way, they're putting that in your head. They, they make you think you're a bad person. They're making you think you're better than everybody. They make you think that you can play games with people. They make you think 
uh, to devise plans to come up against people. But it just enforces that all I have to do is say, I tie binary VQ in the name of, or through Jesus Christ, and they flee when when I say Jesus Christ. They flee out of your out of your body, out of your mind, in which the voices that you're hearing will stop. They're not there no more. They'll flee in fear. If these demonic forces that are bonding you, they flee in fear, and you're allowing them in you. What is it telling you? What is it really telling you? If these unseen forces that are within you, making you think bad thoughts, do bad things, wicked things, they flee in the name of Jesus Christ, what would that make you? What would that make you? Lesser than them, right? Why would it make, make you lesser than them? Because you're letting them uh, bond you in that manner because of the works that you do. You can change. You know, God is a forgiving God. But you have to take the steps. You don't have to say, you're sorry to me. You don't have to say, Brother Abe, I ask for your forgiveness. You don't have to say nothing to me. The one you say that to is to Jesus Christ. When you say it, make sure you say it in true faith that you believe in him. Because he knows. He knows what's in your heart. He knows if you're saying the truth. And he knows when you're lying. He knows you. He knows what's in your heart. You can't hide from him. You can lie to people out here. But you, you can't hide from him because he knows what's in your heart. Yeah, they're they're mockers. Those are the they're 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 the they, they mock God, Jesus Christ. They, they mock the Holy Trinity, however you want to say it. They mock him because they don't believe in him. Uh, they try to use his name. And all this to try to make themselves to look like they're, they're holy, but you can't trick. You can't trick and make it into the into the kingdom of heaven that way, man. I'm letting you know right now. Everything bad that you do here on earth, that's gonna be you're gonna be held, held accountable for it. You know, whatever you've done, you're gonna be held accountable for it. And, you know, you're not going to make it into the kingdom of heaven because you're going to be held accountable for your actions here on earth. Yes, forgiveness is a big part of love. Trust me, I've, I've faced this enemy since I've been a kid all my life. All my life. I've been, I've been better than all my life. And, and I've learned and I've, and I've grown from all my, my spiritual battles and everything that I've been through. I've, I've lost a loved one, you know, a uh, long time ago. But it just made me grow stronger spiritually. You know, I made a promise a long time ago. If the Heavenly Father showed me something that I was going to believe in, in for the rest of my, of my life, He showed me something. And I'm loyal to Him. Truly loyal. You know what happens when people are wicked and and they're out doing bad things and it's a circle of people in that nature sooner or later they're going to tur turn turn uh, against each other that's, that's what normally happens to wicked people and the reason that it, it happens a way is because the things that are bonding them and controlling them they want the vessel, they want the body, they want the soul. So if they can deceive you and trick you, that they're, they're giving you some kind of powers, you're they're actually fooling you, man. You know what makes you makes you all fools. Fools. That's what it is. Who used to say that? I pity the fool, Mr. T. I pity the fool. Well, that's you become foolish. Foolishness. Uh, the spirit of foolishness. The spirit of being dumbfounded. That's who you really are. 
especially when you're trying to come up against a man of God and he sees right through you. He sees who's affiliated. I already know who's affiliated with you. I already know everybody that's affiliated. But I'm not going to say. It's not, it's not up, up to me to say who, who, who your affiliations are and how many of you are. I know. But I'm going to say it because you know what? It's a spiritual war. I know where I stand. I know where you stand. But I know seven times four is already in effect. And things are happening already. They're going to continue to happen. So you mess with the wrong person, man. Jesus Christ is my protector and my savior. Mess with the wrong, wrong individual. You know, you know, it's up to y'all to change your wickedness. <laughs> if I'm stirring the 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 wickedness, or the 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 nest of of uh, rattlesnakes, or the neck, the nest of spiders, or the the nest of roaches, you know, and y'all getting rattled because of what I speak of. Hey, this part of the spiritual war, man. This part of the spiritual war that's happening here on Earth right now. The battle between good and evil. You want to call it the yin yang? That's what it is. This, this is what it is. Good against evil. It's just where you side at. I know where you side at already. He said, you can say it. All the things you want to say about God, you can read certain scripture by, by your works of what you do. I know that you're not of God. <clears throat> the works that you do are evil. They're wicked. God don't like dirty. I'm telling you that right now. It's going to come back to you. You can say this is a, a message that I have for you. The message I just sent to you all is coming from, a, from, a, from higher. He knows your your actions, and it, 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 he's, he's telling me to let you know that anything you try to create through wickedness or evil is going to crumble. It's going to fail. Project after project, alliance after alliance, it's going to fail because it's going to make you stumble. It's going to make you fall. Now, I'm talking about Jesus Christ. He's going to make you stumble, make you fall, and anything that you try to do through witchcraft, nor promise or whatever, is going to backfire to you seven times fold. I'm just letting you know. I'm just being a messenger right now. He's straight up. But anyways, I think this is all for right now. I spoke a little bit, a little bit further of the story that I could go. I mean, there's a lot more I could say. But I just wanted to share where we're here viewing of who I am as an individual, you know, why I wear this hat, you know, I don't wear it all the time, but I'm wearing it for this video because I was talking about combat. And then all of a sudden, as I'm speaking about this, what happens when the Holy Spirit comes and fills your heart to send a message where well, the message has already been sent. So I want to thank the viewers here that were viewing this video, Brother Christopher uh, Clough, Sister Maria Custidio, and another thing, you know, that before I, I, I go, when I say something or I say a story, I'm saying it because I'm I'm just following what my heart is telling me to say. I don't care if people want to twist things around. I don't care about that. I'm going to say whatever I'm going to say because I know the Heavenly Father, Jesus Christ, is allowing me to say it. So, now I am a man of faith. So I'm going to say what I have to say. If the Spirit guides me to say, like the story I said today, I'm going to say it. Uh, that's just me, as spiritual aid, as your brother in Christ. But thank you all for tuning in. Uh, God bless every one of y'all and your families. Uh, always remember, no matter what you're going through or what's coming up against you spiritually or people trying to come up against you spiritually, always maintain a love foundation and, and you're never alone because Jesus Christ is always with you. You are somebody. 
you are somebody we're all unique in our own kind of way you are somebody you do you do you do mean something to to the Heavenly Father because he loves you so he loves you and you are somebody don't let anybody uh, fool you from thinking you're nobody because you are somebody and there's people they'll try to deceive you that way because they want to be in control of you they want to have you as a puppet and we I see a lot of that here in the, in the, the crypto community in the spiritual community where there's people that they think they're greater than everybody else and they have to do evil works uh, try to uh, make a, a paint a person to be bad because they want to eliminate him from from the community because he's awakening uh, people spiritually you know that's that's what I've been doing for a very long time uh, I've been doing this for a very long time even before I entered the crypto community I believe like I said here for a reason and I'm gonna continue to do my works I didn't know that there's so many people here within the crypto community that have been dece deceived by people through falsifying stories podcasters falsifying stories just for the views it's, it's crazy you know but I'm here to change that whether they like like it or not I'm here to change that and I believe I'm making a positive change because I always get messages through Messenger from people that, that say they appreciate me. Just like right now, Sister Maria says, God bless you, Abe, and take care. Praying for you and your family. Yes, thank you very much for the prayers. And God bless you also and your family. Uh, but I'm going to continue to do my works. Now, I'm going to continue to do this works till my time here on Earth. And it's for me to. it's time for me to cross over into the kingdom of heaven. I'm going to continue to do this works. But anyways, everybody have a beautiful, blessed evening. And whoever is here, thank you for joining, hearing a little bit of my stories from combat and hearing a little bit of the spiritual side of it. That's what normally happens. I'm saying a story and the Holy Spirit intervenes and it says what he has to say. Y'all have a beautiful, blessed evening. Peace.